I think you'll find this video today very interesting. It just um, addresses what I see as a real problem in lots of our organizations. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the analysis codes for the uh, function dimension. Okay, in, ver in version 5 of the software, we have the function where dimension takes care of our allocated functions. And then in version 6 of our software, the resource dimension takes care of our allocated resources. The allocated functions and allocated resources are the same thing, but we just slightly renamed them and moved the allocateds from function to resource. So I'm going to prepare uh, this video using the word function, but you six folks out there will just need to know that what I'm describing works equally well and in the same way in the resource dimension. And this will be true for all future videos. All future videos, anytime I say the word function, I'm uh, talking about um, uh, version 5. The allocated functions are in the function dimension, along with departments are in the function dimension. And in the version 6 of the software, the allocateds are over in resources and the departments are still under functions. Maybe I'll say it again, hopefully it could be a little more clear. In version 5 of our software, we put the allocated things, allocated functions, and the departmental information in one dimension and we call that dimension functions. In version 6 of the software, the only big difference in our data structure in version 6 is that we've taken the allocated and put them in their own place called resources. We've left the departments in the head, under the heading of function, okay? So allocateds are under a dimension called resources and the departments are under the dimension called uh, function. That's in version 6. In version 5, the allocated and the departments are in one place called function. Okay, but in any case, as I've traveled around, I ha so I will, for the rest of this video and most of other, for a few years at least, I will continue to use version 5 jargon. And as I travel around, I have come and seen something, some very unusual things. And one particular thing in the accounting system are th is places I've gone, some of them will have hundreds of allocated functions, okay? Now remember, an allocated function comes about um, based on my understanding of the accounting manual. Uh, there's a few allocated functions that exist by policy. This would be like exchange gains, unrealized exchange gains, and uh, unrealized investment gains are, are set aside. Uh, the profit for that is set aside and allocated. Okay, but uh, but most, uh, that's for uh, uh, the two, uh, let's call them statutory allocated functions where you have to have them based on policy. But according to the accounting manual, an allocated function is created by an action of the governing committee. An accountant doesn't create it just because they think it would be useful. They, have, they create it based on an, an action. And so you just don't um, add them willy-nilly you have to add them um, based on a very formal action by the committee. But still, even with that requirement that it be created by a, a action of a committee, uh, often these things come about because of restricted donations. Someone gives a big pile of money, for example, evangelism, the, uh, they give a big donation for evangelism of the um, uh, certain people group, you know, uh, the, the Ringes of, of Southwest Ruritania, you know, and so you, so the, the board accepts the gift and, and puts it, it sets up an allocated function for that particular purpose, okay? Also, boards get excitement, excited about a new thing, like a new parking lot or a new office annex, and so they create an allocated function to hold it. 
Well, I, it is not unusual in lots of our organizations for organizations to have uh, over a hundred of these things. Now, it sounds simple enough, except for the name, just the name of the, of the allocated function is often not enough information to tell you whether and what the purpose of that fund is. For example, you've got the Ringe Evangelism Fund, and you could put Ringe Evangelism Fund, but there's probably a lot more information based on that restricted donation that you want to keep track of uh, as far as that allocated function is concerned. So let's say um, uh, Mr. Jones donated the money and asked for a an annual report. So Mr. Jones gives $100,000 for evangelizing these folks and would like to have an annual report on, on that mailed to his address. Well, you've got to keep track of that and not only do you have to keep track of it, but you need to document it in such a way is that the next vice president for finance or the next treasurer knows that Mr. Ringe is expecting this and knows the whole provisions of it, you see. Uh, uh, consider the global mission money. Uh, somebody writes a grant for a global mission grant, and there's all kinds of rules connected to that, including giving reports back up to global mission, well, where are you going to keep track of these rules? And so uh, a, an on-the-ball accountant or, or treasurer probably needs to have a file on every one of these allocateds, giving all the details, uh, including the committee action and the uh, who they need to be reporting to. If you've got a hundred of these things, who is responsible for making decisions on spending out of these commit uh, out of these? For example, the evangelism fund may be sp um, the evangelism committee be, may be responsible for the evangelism and the global mission, and the bursary. <coughs> the education committee may be responsible for the bursaries, ministerial for, and if you've got hundreds of these things. Uh, uh, it could get complicated. So, so let's just think of, in summary, what I just said. For an allocated function, you need to know, be able to say, this is the committee action that set it up. This is the functions, the allocated function's purpose. This is who is responsible for the allocated function. What committee is responsible, and this is who we have to make an accounting back for. You know, lots of details. So there were three or four things listed right there. So what you can do is, um, let's just take this one right here. I've already set up what I'm going to show you here for the evangelism uh, function. So let's go to that. And so um, here's the evangelism function. And, and there's not a big description field like we had a few in our last video. And so, but we do have this text. So let's open that up. And we have a text here. And this text will allow us to write down the rules connected to this. And so here it says, Evangelism Fund designated to the um, Malfi Tribe in Southeast Rajasthan. Um, annual reports must be sent on May 1st each year to Fred Clover, 121 Amsterdam Way, Waterburg, Virginia. To uh, 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 My assumption is that Fred must have donated the money. Now, you, you might say, well, I don't have to do that. That's, you know, he's donated the money, but we want more money from him. So if we send him annual reports, maybe he'll make more do donations. Now, this is interesting the way this note is set up. Now, each of these fields on this note, the short heading, the description, the lookup code, those, each of those four three fields there, so let's count them. We've got the short heading, description, lookup code, and then this paragraph one is a field, paragraph two is a field, paragraph three is a field, paragraph four and paragraph five. Those are separate data points that are now available on analysis codes to be um, used to filter and report and so the way I've set this up just for the uh, demo purposes is I've set up the short heading to be the person responsible for this analysis dimension for this allocated function 
So who's responsible for it and what committee's responsible for it? You may want to say what um, administrator's responsible for it or what accountant is responsible for the accounting being right for it, you see? And then uh, depending on your creativity, you could make paragraph one gather one type of information about the allocated function, paragraph two, another type of information, paragraph three, four, and five, and so forth. Okay, and so um, what I'd like to do is to show you now how to set this up, how to get start recording this. So we we're leave for the time being, let's leave our allocated function, and let's go, and you'll have to do this over in your organization. All right, and you go to a thing called Standard Text Classes is the first place you've got to go. You only have to go here one time for this project, and you need to create a Standard Text Class Code, okay? And what I've done is I've created the one, I call them Analysis Codes, and let's just look at it, and you can see how I, what fields I use there. Anything works, but you'll need to create a, a class code, uh, a standard text class. And so this is a way that the standard texts are being uh, grouped together. Standard texts are used through throughout the accounting system, and this functionality is available many other places in the accounting system. And so because it's available all over the place, we have to do something to group together the um, the birds of the feather, so to speak, and so we'll we've got a, analysis codes, and all of our uh, standard text relative to anal analysis codes will be put into this class. Okay, and once you've got that set up, then we'll go back to our analysis codes. Let's see here. And, and I'm working in my function dimension. And for the demo purposes, I have not set up, I've set up all of these, but I haven't set up uh, these last few. So let me just set one up for you. So we'll go to this one, and we'll go to uh, we've got it all pulled up here, this analysis dimension. We'll go to the text. We'll hit the text. We're, so this is a new one that hadn't been set up yet. So you come up here, and this is up here because we just uh, put it in place over there in the class deal. Okay, and oops, I do this over and over again. Let's just go back. What I do is I'm going to take, I think this is useful. All right, so we'll will copy the analysis code code okay and then we'll come over here and we'll we'll set up the that all right and then we'll put the analysis code as the text code so now there's at least a psychological linkage and the naming the text code is the same has the same code as the code it's describing if that makes any sense at all okay so we we've, we've got this uh, at least with the same name as the analysis code that we are uh, preparing and we do this and it, it says do you want to create it I don't know what happened there so what we were doing what I was doing earlier is that I'm putting down the name of the person responsible for this a na allocated function, okay, or whatever you want, however way you want to do it, and also you could have one field here and another field there, okay, and this is the ministerial committee is responsible for this um, particular uh, an allocated function, and and um, this is uh, a this allocated functions the purpose of it is to um, uh, what would you what would we call this up professional development funds
for pastor professional development making this up as I go along um, this um, main contributor is Fred Smith okay such and such an address allocated function established by committee on 12 31 2007 you could even cut and paste the committee action right here and so we put it there and um, and we'll do that for every one of them and then we'll go on to the next one okay pioneer missionary movement text all right we'll come over here to allocated function I forgot to I forgot to copy this again by the way all of those that I did before I started a recording I also forgot to copy them as well so every time I've had to go back and do that away all right My evangelism committee is responsible for this. Okay. Created by a donation from John Doe. Such and such an address. Looks like I'm about to run out of power. I better hurry, huh? All right. And we could paste the committee action in here if we needed to. All right. Now, one little thing I need to show you is let's say that when we did it, we had, we've done this one. We come over here and we want, I forgot to show you something really important. I can show it to you. Um, now, it's not too hard. All right, so here, in our last, our last one, we've done two. I forgot to show you the thing over in Ministerial. We did this. So we go back over the text. You see, we don't have the text that I've set up. You say, well, what happened to it? Well, because I forgot to do a very important thing. I guess I'm glad I forgot. Okay, so here it is. This is the um, Ministerial one right here. All right, and we go, okay. And you see, now I've got it all here. And you forgot, I've got to attach it. You see the button here? Don't forget. So attach it. And now we've, that item's been attached. And then we go over here to the pi, uh, global, to the pioneer one. Okay, I forgot to attach that one. So we've got it here. We'll get this baby up here. Okay. So here's the pioneer one. So we see it all right here, then I attach it. All right, we're, so we're attaching it to each of those analysis codes. So now the now when I open it, it's there. Okay, and when I, I'm over in the, on the Pioneer uh, Ministerial Scholarship text, it's there. All right, now let's say that I have a mistake or I want to change this. Uh, based on my practicing with this and working with this, amending it or even deleting it is not really something you could do very well from the analysis code field. Okay, so if, if my text is not satisfying me, is not right, what I need to do is to go over and fix it over here. Okay, 
so not over near analysis codes over into the um, all right standard text language variants okay and and it's it works the same way as where we just were okay and so I I've got those analysis codes so I'm bringing up the one I want to fix I'll open the one I want to fix oops now I've got to bring up a little bit different over here so I've got to bring up the language okay and I go okay it brings it open and now I can amend and delete just fine over here now the you, you might have said, well, why didn't I just create them over here? Well, based on what I know at this point, I don't see how to attach this to the analysis code from this input screen. So if you get it in here right, you could create all of your analysis codes over here. I mean, your standard text over here, including ability to amend and delete. But then you're going to have to go over to your analysis codes and open them each one up and attach, attach it if that's what if the way you wanted to do it so um, so it's easy to easier to manage them over in this standard text language variants uh, uh, function functionality okay but it's not easy to attach them right and it's uh, easy to attach them over on the analysis codes uh, the text field but it's not easy to edit them so it's a little bit of a problem okay so now once you've got the the standard text in then it's available for reports so let's look at the report here okay here is the um, uh, a report I made earlier so here's a, a nice little report that is pulling in the name, the account code, the analysis code code, the analysis code, the allocated function uh, description, who's responsible for that allocated function, what committee is responsible for spending the money, how much they have, and a full description of its purpose and any other types of responsibilities connected to it. And um, we have several fields. We could have actually put in the date in which the, uh, the allocated function was approved as one of the fields as well. So let's look at the, um, the query that produced all this for us. And it's fairly straightforward query. Now, you're, you, I've, I've put in my own headings. Okay. And, and so over here, the the dimension the items the data items that are used to make this report a summary report is this first one is the analysis code code account for l4 and the name okay and then l4 standard text description l4 standard text lookup code the base amount and L4 standard text paragraph one. So these three here come from the standard text. And so let's look at exactly where those things are in this uh, construction here. And so we'll come over here to L4. And you can see here is the analysis code code and name for the function. You're very familiar with those two. But then under standard text down here, I have uh, these data fields that are available. I have a description, lookup code, and paragraph all put over here. And these are the three that I've used. But I could also use short heading. And I could also use paragraph two, three, four, and five, each to mean something different, OK? So you, it takes some reflection on your part to say exactly what do I want to capture on um, by using standard text and then define each of those um, and, then, and then use one of these fields to capture each of the things that you want to keep separate. Okay, so mine, I use the description to be the um, name of the person responsible and the lookup code to be the name of the committee and 
and paragraph one to be the general uh, narrative of the purpose of the allocated function. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, just for uh, just for your curiosity, I also went over here under report style and said that I did not want any um, headings put out and that I wanted automatic row height and that is what enabled this thing and and then in this column right here I formatted it let me just keep showing you what I've done here I formatted the cell so to wrap text and so I went to alignment and wrap text and that is how I get this behavior here when I extract it okay of, of wrapping the columns not being long uh, wide I mean and being as deep as they need to be to capture the information in them so I thought that's sort of cool and then um, I could also make a function statement like this one this function statement uh, gives the transactions let's see if we can get this thing working okay I probably could have saved this a little bit better let's expand it okay so here's a function statement that I made up and and the statement part the bottom part is not particularly unusual nothing particularly uh, uh, unusual about it uh, it's just this, a regular expanded fields but what is unusual is now I've been able to capture at the top of the function statement the name of the function the allocated fund uh, the committee responsible for the allocated fund uh, the manager of the allocated fund and the description who's supposed to be getting what relative to the fund now uh, I I'll mention to you that each of these fields could have been used as a filter okay may it be easier to show you over here is that I can use the field okay let's see if I can get this thing open all right so the 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 standard text fields down here can be used as a filter so I could if I wanted to have all of the allocated functions that belong to a certain that are being managed by a certain committee the lookup code is capturing the committee I could bring it up here and filter for just that committee okay administrative committee and get just their reports I could also filter put them all out but sort it by that field okay the lookup code if I wanted all of each committees to be grouped together I would have uh, sorted it by this okay that will sort them by the committee all right let's see if we can see what I'm talking about you see so all the administrative together all the education together all the evangelism together might make it easier to prepare a report so I thought that was fairly interesting to, to be able to start bringing under some sort of managerial control these allocated functions. Now, allocated functions are an area that I'm concerned about. That some of these organ, some of our organizations have hundreds of these things, and I'm positive they don't have a clue what some of them are for. And so, um, this is a way to start trying to get a handle on it. However, this functionality can work just as well with your WHO codes. So if you've got a lot of employees that you want to start trying to come up with some um, uh, departments they belong to or keeping them by departments, um, you could do it that here. Um, any of the uh, org ID dimensions, any of the dimensions that you want to be able to come up with a description of, of the analysis codes, you could use this exact same functionality. Uh, I hope that we can find more uses for standard text. Uh, many, many places standard text could be applied. And um, so you see the way that standard texts are working in this context. Uh, you'll be ready when you run into it some other place. So thank you for listening. And I believe this is the last video um, that we're making in this series. And 
Um, so thanks for watching the entire series.